G'day guys, and today I'm going to be walking you through Hume's guillotine, otherwise known as the is-ought problem. Now the is-ought problem states that just because something is a certain way, doesn't mean that it ought to be a certain way. So to demonstrate this, let's have a look at some positive or is claims. So, people who receive formal education are more likely to have a higher income later in life. People who eat food are more likely to survive in life. Some people murder. People are eaten by crocodiles. Now these are all descriptive statements, they are factually based, they correlate with reality. So then, let's have a look at their corresponding normative or ought claims. Everyone should get a formal education. People should eat food. Therefore, people should murder. And lastly, people should be eaten by crocodiles. Now this naturalistic fallacy of deriving an ought statement from an is statement is very enticing because it generates an emotional reaction. This often occurs in politics where they bring up some data or some evidence showing, look, when we put money into this area, there's some sort of beneficial outcome. Therefore, we should or ought to put money into this specific area. And people go, oh, that's great, you know, everyone gets a formal education, everyone gets food and that sort of stuff. But it ignores the underlying reality of you know, we're stealing money from one group of people to spend it on another. So the factual reality of taxation is theft, and theft is always immoral. Uh, the theft that the government performs is outweighed by the fuzzy, warm feelings of people getting some sort of benefit. These warm, fuzzy feelings, however, completely evaporate once you start deriving negative connotations for certain people from his statements. So, for example, people should or ought to be eaten by crocodiles would not swing very well with people and you wouldn't likely to get many votes if you're a politician proposing such a thing. So therefore, where people are happy to derive ought from is statements is entirely subjective. There's just an arbitrary line that they will or will not cross at some point. And two people in the same room can have completely opposing views on what ought to be. One example of this in Australia is the uh, people arriving by boats and then they're put in detention centres. So people look at that and say, people are trying to come here to Australia illegally, which is the descriptive, the positive, or is claim, and then there's two different normative reactions. One is we ought to let them in, and one is we ought to turn them away. So with that, I hope I can demonstrate the inherent subjectivity of the naturalistic fallacy, and at what point people are happy to let an ought statement be derived from an is statement. What people believe has no impact on what is true. You can believe that gravity doesn't exist, but this doesn't stop objects of mass from exerting it. You can also believe that evolution does not exist, but this does not stop animals from evolving over time. And when we apply this to ethics, you can believe that murder is a moral good if you're, you know, really screwed up in the head, but that does not make it so. This creates a bit of a problem, however. If we're not able to derive ought statements from is statements, how is it possible to discern and then enforce objective secular ethics? The answer, I believe, comes from a philosopher known as Immanuel Kant. Now Kant doesn't move from an is statement to an ought statement because he recognised this is not the ground for objective moral rules because this can only be the grounds for subjective preferences, as I've shown before. What he did instead is he showed that some values are logically coherent whilst others are not. So let's take an example of an is ought statement and see if it is logically coherent when it is observed as a universal good. So let's take the example of some people are assaulted Therefore, people should assault one another. It is morally good to assault. Therefore, for people to be considered moral, they must assault and want to be assaulted. However, the latter part of that sentence invites a logical inconsistency. For it to be assault, you must not want to be assaulted in some manner, because if you do, then you're just, you know, you're voluntarily making the decision to get punched in the head or whatever. So what we have is someone who wants to be assaulted in order to be moral, but doesn't want to be assaulted in order for the act to be considered assault. This is a logical inconsistency. You cannot perform two morally opposite acts at the same time. This is the physics equivalent as to throwing a rock up and down at the same time. The really key thing to remember here is consent. If people consent to be assaulted in order to be moral, then it is no longer assault. This also applies to murder, theft, rape, and any other initiation of force. If you consent to it, it is no longer an initiation of force because it is freely admitted to. So there's Hume's guillotine, and more importantly, Immanuel Kant's workroom. 
Armed with this information and the knowledge of the naturalistic fallacy, you should be able to look around your world and see that things are claimed they ought to be done because they are a certain way. Something that comes to my mind is circumcision. Occasionally, men will get infections in their foreskin. Therefore, we ought to chop off their foreskins at birth. Whereas before, you may have only had an emotional reaction or some sort of utility action for this, such as, oh my god, that's so horrible, or, you know, this infection only occurs in like less than 1% of men, why do you need to chop off so many kids' foreskins? But now you can look at it and see that, hey, if we take this moral rule of basically assaulting people at birth and apply it as a moral rule, it's logically inconsistent, and therefore it cannot be moral to commit such an action. Thanks all for sticking around, and have a good one.